Okay, so I've I've played with uh, with my roof to get my elevation, and I've got it. It's not exact, but it's within. It's less than one two hundred fifty sixth of an inch, which may be close enough for Revit to do fascias and stuff. Uh, we'll see. But you can see here on this side, this is kind of how I want this to look right now. Uh, we may have to edit this a little bit more later while we're dealing with faces and stuff. But once you've got this done, our height set, then we'll join. We'll go ahead and do a regular roof join. And join those together. Okay. And that looks pretty good right now on the front. So. Uh, ugh, come on. Um. We'll do the same thing here in the back. And let's look at floor plan. We've got the same situation of, of uh, beams there in the back, but we'll take our floor plan size of 12 feet wide, 10 feet off the house, and we will assume that that is our wall height or our wall perimeters and then add our overhangs to that you got to remember you don't have any walls back there that you're working from other than these two here um, so you're just gonna have to play with that those this wall and this wall to set your initial two heights and then draw you a sketch out here and dimension it and then draw you a a line back here I'm just like with the garage I would do it out here in the front first to get my heights set and my widths and overhangs and everything correct and then edit that and move it back in um, and I think I would move it back the actual sketch my roof back to the face of core of this wall here so that gives me that neat little overhang right there so you try it I'm going to try it and we'll see how it works. Okay, so I, I got the uh, two the roof on the rear porch. I got it done, sized and height based on the uh, truss profile D. But it, it, it's not, the height wise is not working out right on the fascia. So, um, one question that comes to my mind is that those beams or the joist that are holding it up uh, the two two by twelve lintel beams there's no height given for them that I see in plan view my elevation doesn't give me a height other than truss bearing height in any of my elevation drawings I'm not seeing anything so I'm gonna make the decision to get this roof aligned with the original roof now one thing about trust profile D you have to notice is that there's not a um, uh, the offsets are a little bit different the, there's not a three and a half inch wall that it's sitting on it's sitting on those two two by twelves which is five inches centered in from the 12 feet. Okay, we'll deal with that <clears throat> in another video. We're trying to get our roof built correctly first. So if you've done this uh, with that one foot three and a quarter heel height, you're going to notice that the edges don't line up. Okay, and they have to line up because our fascia is at the same height all the way around the building. So I need to go to my north elevation and zoom in on it. And let's measure. Okay, so that's one and thirty-five one twenty-eights. So 
So I've got to add that to my regular offset that I have for that roof. I guess I'll check and make sure my... Oh, <laughs> that could have been it right there. I didn't make it an 812 slope. Wow, that got it a lot closer. Okay, so that, that looks better. It's still not correct. So that's like God, almost a half of an inch. Is it 123, 256? It is a half of, no, it's less than a half of an inch. 123 over 256. I do. Ooh. I'm going to play with 11. Let's see if I can even measure that. Let's see. Yeah. Got to bring it down 5, 256. So just like over on the front. Should be the same measurement as the one in the front, whatever you came up with there. So do that because those corners need to be as close as possible. And then I'll check it out and it will extend it into the main roof on the next video.